It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Wisconsin Herds Director of Marketing and Digital, James Price. How are you doing today? Good, yeah, good. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to work in professional sports? Yeah, sure. So um, so I've been with the Herd uh, since December 29th, uh, 19. But before that, I worked in some other roles of sports. But when I was in college, so I graduated from Marquette in 2016. Um, right before I finished college, you know, maybe a few months going into my senior year, I knew that I had a love for advertising and things like persuasion, things like copywriting, um, digital media. But I also knew at that point, like, okay, what product do I really, really care about? And when I'm thinking about some of my huge interests, sports to me as a career, that came up um, a lot just in my kind of research and just looking at different careers. So I would say, you know, I've always had an interest in sports. I played it in high school. Sports is like, how could you not love it? The competition, the fans, the music, everything combined. But towards the end of college was, is when I really started to think, oh, I, you know, I can see myself, um, you know, in a career in sports. And I took a, in my advertising capstone class, we actually worked with the Milwaukee Brewers on a project. Um, and I was the copywriter for that project. So that to me kind of solidified like, oh yeah, I really, I have to be in this industry because um, it's so fascinating to me on many levels. Um, but then also that's when I started to look at grad school as well. So I did my grad program through Northwestern Sports Administration Program. And that basically just confirmed everything that I that I loved about the industry and specifically getting into kind of the sports marketing uh, aspect of sports. So that's just a little bit of background into kind of when I really started to think about it as a career. Because up until that point, I was like, oh, maybe working at an ad agency would be cool. Uh, working for, um, you know, one of the Procter & Gamble brands, something like that. But then I really had to take a, you know, a, a deep dive into what do I ultimately care about? And that's to me, like, I'm always thinking about different things as it relates to sports. And that's kind of um, just a brief kind of synopsis of how I you know, uh, kind of stumbled upon having sports as a career, which I'm glad about. What was your time like, of course, working as a guest service representative for the Milwaukee Bucks? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, I I had, I knew my senior years when I really wanted to dive into sports. So I figured, okay, let me start getting experience in different areas because at that point I knew I had an interest in the sports marketing space but also knew it would be important to see other areas of the business so with the bucks I'm um, working in hospitality it was it was interesting like it was almost like a movie like every single game it was something new with people asking you questions about where can I get a burger where can I find the, the you know the nearest pro shop um, and then also at that time that's when the bucks were slowly starting to unveil plans about the new arena that was happening um, which is now Pfizer reform but even then you have to really stay up to date on what's happening with the Bucks because it, it, it was a part-time role as game day, but you still had to be equipped with all the information about what the Bucks were doing. So it was, it was crazy, like, um, but it was a lot of fun because I not only worked on kind of my communication and, and, and development relationship with fans that you may see over and over, but it really makes you pay attention to the business, um, especially from a hospitality perspective, because, as we know, one bad experience, people may not come back ever again. So taking that into mind um, was a really valuable experience uh, for me. And um, and I was lucky enough to, to be selected as, so, uh, you know, every, throughout the, every month they would have, they would kind of honor or showcase people um, who had, who went through the, you know, the correct protocols for guest services. And apparently there was a mystery shopper um, that came up to me. I went through the correct protocol and, um, and I was able you know, to get honored during a halftime show um, during the game. So I was like, okay, I guess that's my uh, confirmation that I, you know, going through the correct things, elevating the fan experience, things like that. That's so amazing. What are, what were some of your roles as the marketing and pro promotions when you worked with the Milwaukee Admirals? Yeah. So with the Admirals, um, so, they're the, 
you know, there are, they've been around since like, you know, they're for a long time. Um, their NHL affiliate is Nashville Predators for people who may not know, but during my time there, I handled and, uh, and worked in the promotion space as it relates to game activation. Um, so whether it be helping set up different promotions uh, for fans throughout intermission, whether it be, you know, setting up an activation for a sponsor during the game as well, uh, that kind of gave me that introduction into the entertainment side and marketing side of sports. Um, and minor league sports is so fascinating to me because the community element for me is very, very strong, but especially with the admirals they've been around for a long time. So in my role, I was able to, uh, you know, see a lot of really unique promotions, wacky promotions, but again, it gave me that opportunity to, um, again, find, you know, work on my guest services and hospitality, but this was more so like getting the crowd pumped up, throwing t-shirts in the crowd, um, you know, making sure that people were excited about being at an Admirals game. Um, and I think that's just a little bit about kind of what, you know, what I got to experience, um, you know, with my time at the Admirals as an intern, um, but then also as a lead where I was in a more supervisory role um, and, and kind of taking charge in that respect. What was your time like working with the York Revelations as a marketing and digital marketing assistant? Yeah, so uh, with the York Revolution, so they are, are part of the Atlantic League. Um, that, to me, that gave me a really good inside look into all areas of the business, but especially like as it relates to working in social media and content, because when you're working in content, you're working with sales, you're working with ticketing, you're working with sponsoring, you know, you're working with um, you know, season ticket members, um, you're working with community relations to showcase what the herd are doing. And that to me was, to me, that was the best experience that I've, I've been able to have up until now, because it essentially gave me a really good idea of the different content that I would I need to produce for faith. That's when I started to do more photography as it relates to my career. Um, I mean, working in baseball, it was a, it's a grind. Like, don't get me wrong. It, it was hot. You know, Pennsylvania summers are brutal. Um, but I dropped my whole life in Milwaukee to move out there because I knew I, I was serious about getting into this industry and I would do anything. But that to me, it was, it was unbelievable. Like the promotions that we did, like we had candy being thrown from a helicopter. We had the Clydesdale horses, um, the office night that just really opened my mind to like get super, super creative from things that I'm writing on social media, things that I'm capturing on social media um, and like it really yeah like working in baseball it gives you a different kind of promotional um, mindset and just thinking about how to how to make it exciting because 70 home games is a lot like and being able to find something unique about each home game aside from the play like a lot of times the stuff that's happening on the field that will take care of itself but capturing that excitement around it and you know and trying to generate um, you know ticket sales trying to generate single game walk up you know, and, and, and help me on the social media space where I got to lead everything. So I built a content calendar for the team. Um, like, I, you know, I, I worked the all-star game for the Atlantic League, which was in New York that year. And that was an amazing experience because I get, I, you know, working with all the other teams that were there, the fans that were there, it was a spectacle. I mean, um, Brooks Robinson was a Hall of Fame third baseman. I got to meet him, but all those different things. That's just like a microcosm of like the kind of experience that I was able to have there where I got to take the lead on a lot of things that were being externally communicated in the social media space. And it really, that, that really gave me like that true confidence that I knew I would need in order to find the next role, um, which is where I am now. What was it like to come back to the Milwaukee Bucks um, affiliate and be a part of the Wisconsin herd as the director of marketing and digital marketing yeah so um it is it's, it's, it's an amazing feeling um and it's funny when i left wisconsin and moved to pennsylvania i didn't necessarily know if i would be back in wisconsin like yes i knew i wanted to move back to the midwest after their their internship ended with the revolution but i also didn't think that i would be back you know working for the bucks for their affiliate um but it's 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 everything I honestly could ever ask for um, because it allows me to, you know, lead marketing, lead digital, um, lead all these different areas of the business and still have kind of the bucks as a, as a resource um, in terms of the company. And 
it's like everything that the Bucks stand for, I personally stand for as it relates to even diversity and inclusion. And like, for me, like there's no, there's no really no better feeling. Not only do I enjoy the work that I'm doing, but then the different causes that the Bucks are really passionate about, um, I'm also passionate about. And to have that align is something that is really hard to, um, like you can't really describe it. And then also to my, my brother works for the Bucks. So even having that relationship where like, he, he's working with the Bucks. I'm working with the herd. I'm the big brother. He's the little brother. It's kind of, it's kind of a, uh, you know, kind of funny juxtaposition uh, with those. So, and all that being said, it's, it's been, it's been great to, to be back uh, with the Bucks working for their affiliate, um, especially because like I said, I love minor league sports. So to be able to do it for the team that I was rooting for when I was in Milwaukee, because I went to school in Marquette, like I said, I was rooting for the Bucks. I've been a big Bucks fan since 2013. So full circle to be come back and working for the Bucks in their affiliate. Uh, it's an amazing feeling. Of course, as you said that your brother works for the Bucks, is there any like sibling rivalry when it comes to you're on the minor league level of the Bucks and he's on the professional level? No, uh, I, I wouldn't say sibling rivalry in that respect. We, I mean, obviously we're really, we're close to my twin brother, Justin, and we're really, really competitive. So we're competitive in that sense. Um, but if anything, we're just, it's, it helps us appreciate just being in the moment of being able to work for the same employer. Cause we've done that in like internships, uh, you know, with the Bucks um, or part-time roles, but then to do it like full-time in a career, it's more like we're just appreciative of this, you know, to be able to work uh, with each other. But it, it does make for, I mean, it, it's fun. It's just a fun situation where, um, you know, different jokes and what like, and, and whatnot working for like the, the little brother uh, per se. What are some of your roles and responsibility as director of marketing and digital marketing? Yeah, so um, so with the herd, so I so I oversee all our social media platforms. So social media kind of uh, production. We recently brought on someone full time, so managing him, um, <clears throat> you know, photography in that space, copywriting, um, anything that's being communicated in the social space it comes from my desk um, which is a pretty cool thing to see your work out there um, that's a that's a huge function of what I do I'm off and also lead kind of our email marketing um, as well so you know in, engaging with our, our, our fan base through uh, e-newsletters uh, through different offers um, I've been leading our retail space lately so um, we're looking to explore e-commerce and I've been leading that I've been leading different uh, you know promotional offers that we've done so anything from seasonal things to holiday packs to anything from um, you know a greek bobblehead promotion that, that we ran um, in march i kind of oversee all of that space because we're always trying to drive revenue in the merchandise space because yes like my job is to you know drive ticket sales is to you know, you know uh, drive members full season memberships but retail has really become a, a integral part of what we're doing to um, align with the books so i would say that's another huge part um, media planning. Um, so, you know, putting together a media plan to figure out where we want to advertise, how much we want to advertise. Uh, that's another uh, key part um, of any marketing mix, but that's kind of, kind of where, where, you know, I oversee things. Um, and then just other things like for photography, um, leading that on game days for different events, working with different trade partners that we may have who may be doing photography. Um, it, it's just a lot. Like it, it's every like any external communication. That's a huge part of what I do, um, and, and just capturing that and trying to drive revenue and 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 make our brand more relevant. Because for 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 your listeners, like we've been around since the 2017-18 season, so we're still relatively new. So it's my job to always be increasing brand relevance in the marketplace, whether it be something on social, whether it be you know, driving retail that we haven't done before. So it's really important for me and it's really exciting to be a part of something that's, you know, we're still building and growing and we've done a lot of great things, but there's still so much to do. Um, but, but hopefully that gives you kind of an idea on uh, some of the functions that fall under my, which it can be a lot, um, but I welcome it. What is it like to run, of course, the sports team's social media? Oh man, it's, 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 it can be a lot if you, 
if you are staying in tune with what's going on now, luckily for me, like I pay really close attention to what's happening with pop culture or what's happening with our parent club. And it, it can be, there's so many moving pieces that you have to keep in mind because like a lot of people, sometimes people think social media is just like, oh, it's just, it's simply a creative space, you know, where you can come up with things like, yes, that's partly true, but there's also a huge strategic element uh, that we have to consider um, because if something isn't performing well on social media, as you know, like that doesn't mean you don't keep doing it. You have to fine tune and figure out what works, what isn't working. But yeah, you know, handling social media, it's, it's funny. Like when you're, I've been doing it for a while now for handling social media for teams where like, it's, it's so weird to think about how to be on like the outside looking in to like see how it's being consumed. But for me, like I'm always um, looking to see, you know, how stuff is performing. Are people interacting? Are people engaging in? Like for me, it's, it's an exciting thing. And it, it's something that's always changing. Like for each platform, like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, like, like as you probably know, there's something, is, there's always something else to talk about. So it's just a matter of figuring out, okay, are we gonna focus on this, this, and this? And sometimes we can focus on these different things. So um, it's, a, it's a lot of fun, um, a lot of strategy, a lot of thinking. It can be stressful um, if it could just be stressful just because that's the nature of it, because especially during the season when we have a lot of things that we need to be talking about and hitting and promoting. But ultimately, I think it, it gives me that creative freedom that I've always sought out and with whatever I do. What is the process of creating a sports brand for a sports team on social media? So I think um, making sure that your team is you know, making sure that whatever content that you're putting out is not only relevant, but it is relatable. And I think those two are, those are some of the main things I try to, I try to keep in mind uh, when creating content uh, for social, because like fans want to feel like they're talking to another fan to me, because, and I look at some of the other big, you know, you know, big brands like restaurants or fast food places and I look I look to see what they're doing and a lot of stuff they're doing is just it's very relatable so like for me when I'm building a sports brand like I'm trying to generate excitement about what guys are doing so if a guy gets called up for instance the Houston Rockets had six herd alum on their roster during the 2020-21 um, regular season NBA, NBA regular season and for me like that's again a prime example of paying attention to what's going on, finding a way to flip it to tell our story, to showcase all the talent that we've had um, and that's now on the next level, which is, of course, that's ultimately where we want our players to go. So, like, that kind of thing is a perfect way, like, looking to see when I'm posting these things, it's getting really high engagement. People are commenting. And, like, those are the kind of things that you constantly keeping in mind. And sometimes you have to look for those stories. They're not always going to be a layup. Uh, and that's a part of the basketball pun. But um, you really do have to pay attention to you know, what's going on with other teams, um, your own parent club to see what they're doing. I mean, I track all of the different players who have played for us um, in the past to see if there's anything that we can kind of highlight. Like, these are the kind of things that – because ultimately, like, it's not about me. It's about the team. It's about – fans being able to connect with the players and as long as that can happen that to me is probably one of the biggest things about building a sports brand um especially um now with this digital element to it of course whenever everybody was in lockdown what was some of your plans whenever it came to keeping that fan interaction when the fans were not in the stadiums yeah that's a that's a fantastic question so as it relates to when, when the pandemic hit, um, like literally like the first couple, you know, first two and a half weeks, um, I worked pretty heavily and extensively on a, con a strategic content plan. So I looked at everything from, okay, what's the purpose of us posting this? Because I never just want to post something just to post it. Like that's never my MO, but like figuring out, okay, what's the purpose of this? What's the creative direction? And then more importantly, especially when the pandemic hit, what's the tone that we're you know, what's the tone that we're using? Because we have to be very mindful when you're, you know, when you're doing things for social media, how will this be perceived? Um, and like, we, and when the pandemic hit, you know, the, the world shut down and it was kind of, it was scary. So like when you're posting stuff, it's like, is this going to 
Is this going to be feel good? Is this community sort related? Or are you just talking basketball? So honestly, like, I found ways to talk about basketball probably like a month and a half um, kind of after after March 2020, because in that that month, I kind of just I went our channels went dark a little bit just to kind of, OK, take a step back. Let's not just be posting instantly and figure out what you know, what what should we be communicating? So that's when I worked pretty closely with the Bucks um, on developing a content plan that align with theirs. So whether it be um, things related to the community, which is a huge part, obviously, in the pandemic about finding ways to recognize first responders and things of that nature, um, as well as um, slowly getting back to basketball, because like you said, we, engaging them because they're not in the stadium is huge, but finding ways to um, incorporate. So we started doing herd rewind. So every, you know, once a week, every week, we would showcase what was happening, you know, a, a major moment from the previous season and the herd. So we had the best record in the G League before the season got shut down. Um, but so it was plenty to talk about in terms of kind of season rewind. So we did some of that. Um, we started, I started to do more sneaker content um, to highlight and showcase some of the sneakers that the players are wearing. Uh, I knew the NFL draft was coming. So I came up with content around that. Um, just really doing it on the calendar, seeing what was going on and finding ways to jump in um, and, and engage our fans. So even this past year, we didn't play in the G League bubble, but we had our two-way player down there. So I worked with other teams to figure out how can I get content um, to showcase. So whether it be our two-way player giving a tour of, of, you know, of, the, of, of where they were at in the bubble, like working with our league on getting video content so we could share on our own channels. Um, I'm mean, even working with players, two-way players now. Um, that's a, 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 that's kind of a, a, a little insight into like the strategy. And, you know, again, the feel good part was huge. So like we worked with Visit Oshkosh, which is the visitor bureau here. We worked with them on a poetry contest in April. Little things like that just having a, ni a nice mix of content where we still can talk basketball because obviously we're a basketball team and people want to talk hoops, but being very aware of what's going on in the world, um, that was a huge thing for me um, during that period. What is something that you learned now that you did not know before becoming a director of marketing and digital marketing? Hmm, that's a good question. I think... I think, yeah, I think one thing that that comes to mind is like I always always knew that obviously it's a it's it's a lot of things that come into like the, the social media part, but then the strategy part is something I definitely have learned a lot of more about in terms of not just saying okay, what's a different what's a content piece we can post and when can we post it, but as I was saying, really diving deep into the strategy and the organization. So not only I can show things like this, you know, show our strategy to people within the herd, but more importantly, when someone from the bus is asking about, hey, can I see this content piece? Hey, can I see what plan together, what plan you put together for retail? Because we need to make sure things align with us. I've been really detailed um, and thorough and kind of in that planning process. And that's something that I think I've definitely have, have learned in my in my role now because I'm not just executing things now. I'm also concepting. I'm also trying to be strategic about it. I'm also trying to keep big picture in mind about, okay, how will this be received? You know, how much for like, even for retail, you know, you can't just sell something for $20 if you're not going to make anything. Like what's going to be the profit? What are the hard costs of that item? It's, I've really got to dive deep um, into a lot of these things in the areas of the business that I know will continue to benefit me as I grow in my career. How do you balance, of course, personal life and running a social media page for a sports team? That's a question I ask myself literally all the time. <laughs> um, it's, it, to be honest, it's hard. It can be hard to balance. Some people may not tell you that because they might be like, oh, I love social. But like for me, it's, it can be hard to balance um, and also like mentally, like you have to keep yourself mentally sharp. And like, if you have a job on social, you kind of have to always be on. So what I do is a lot of times, if I know the Bucks are playing or something like that, I'll just check in, you know, before a game, like for pregame and see if there's any content we can repurpose. And after I'll usually just repurpose content. But a lot of times I'll 
put specific pockets of time that I that I'll be on social media as it relates to work and personal because like I also have a food blog outside of work that I do I've been doing for seven years so like that's also something I do on social media as well is veganfoodfinds.com uh, if you all want to check it out uh, veganfoodfinds underscore um, but like it I say that to say like because I not only have that but I have work so I really have to be very adamant about okay I'm working from this time to this time during the day and a lot of times I usually try to be on social media the most during then because obviously I'm working so I try to use that as time to you know be on social media interacting with the fans after hours is when I try to be very strategic about it so say from you know say from five you know sometimes you know I'll be okay turn my phone off from five to seven no questions gonna do something else I shouldn't try to find ways to escape so even if I'm if I go on a run no phone um, if I'm going to work out no phone um I try to find ways to disconnect throughout my day and other leisure activities that I'm doing and I find that that usually helps because even because even when you're not on your phone you can be thinking about like there's always something to be thinking about some creative ideas so I try to yeah, I usually pockets of time throughout the day is kind of how I best balance it because if you don't you would drive yourself crazy like I guarantee you because especially in my role you're overseeing things and now we all have someone that'll be helping with posting but even then like you still want to check and see you know how are things how are things performing is the tone right things like that so it's a constant every day every day every day battle uh to really make sure I have this uh, kind of social personal life mental health thing down packed that's a great tool. What advice would you give somebody looking to work in professional sports on the digital marketing and marketing side? So I say this all the time to people, create a portfolio, create a portfolio, create a portfolio. And it's so important because when you're working in the digital space, employers want to see that you've done the work or you've done similar types of work to what you are applying for, for jobs, because it's one thing to say, oh, I can write social media copy. Oh, I'm good at photography. But like they, people need to see it. Like they, they need to see the tangible work. And even if it isn't like, say for example, you want to get into social media, say you don't have a ton of social media experience. Okay, maybe you have website experience or you have PR experience. That is just as important because a lot of that all plays into what social is because social posts, you know, the different kinds of kinds of pieces where you may be, you know, helping people learn more about a product, helping learn people learn more about uh, some retail offer. Like you have to be creative in that, but it's also all encompassing. So you have to like really make sure you're building these skills to have a portfolio, but then thinking about, okay, the creative writing, you know, um, more PR writing for you have to announce things. Um, you like keeping this in mind is crucial but having that tangible work thing, I think is huge. Um, that's a, a huge piece of advice for anyone trying to get into digital. Um, and another thing is um, like for people who wanna work in this, continue to like focus on writing. Like, and I know I kind of mentioned it with the portfolio, but that's like, that's almost like the end result of what you've done. To me, like you need to be focused on like, how do, how do you become a stronger writer in everything, whether it be writing emails, whether it be writing blog posts. Like I started writing blog posts on LinkedIn about the industry even before I got in full time because you need to show people that you're an expert. Um, I always tell people just because you're not a CMO yet doesn't mean you don't know as much as a CMO does about the industry. Yes, CMO has may, obviously has a lot more experience, but you, you still can be thinking strategically about the business, about digital media, about social media and showing other people that will be huge in your in your job seek and job search because by the time you are applying for a job, you may already have connections based off what you've done on LinkedIn. So I think those are the two biggest things is like not only have a portfolio that you can show in your resume, but you also need to be fine tuning the portfolio, fine tuning your writing skills and showing people that you can do the job. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the Wisconsin Herd? Yeah, so um, listeners can find me on jamesaprice.com. Um, they can connect with me there. You can find me on LinkedIn as well. Uh, those are like the two main places for social media as it relates to my career. And then personally, as I mentioned a shameless plug earlier, 
um, veganfoodfinds.com. And then on Instagram at veganfoodfinds underscore. Um, I'm usually posting, posting on there different food that I've eaten at restaurants or made. And it's just a fun, like, personal hobby that, that helps me get away from work um, and escape. Now, as for the Wisconsin Herd, you can find us on Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, all at Wisconsin Herd. Um, and then you can also find us on, um, we have also have, you know, I've been working to promote us on YouTube as well and Google, uh, Google Business. So these are, those are some of the main places you can find us. Um, always a lot of great content on there. Uh, different things to keep you know keep people excited and whatnot but you know those are the main places you can find me and the wisconsin herd um the nba g league affiliate of the milwaukee bucks thank you again james price for your interview and best of luck in your future with the wisconsin herd as the director of marketing and digital marketing no oh, yeah appreciate it thanks brandon again for for you know allowing me to, to kind of share more about my career uh and my time at the herd so far um you know, always happy to be a resource to anyone who, uh, who has questions about the industry, follow up questions, wants to learn more about, you know, why I choose to get the degrees that I did, anything. My experience is now always happy to be a resource because I know what it felt like to be on the outside looking in, trying to find that full time role. So, yeah, thanks again. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak. You're welcome. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, James Price, for your interview, and best of luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.